welcome to the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference 2018 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Malcolm Johnson, who is Deputy Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union. Malcolm, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Max. Now, you've just been re-elected as uh, Deputy Secretary General. You've got a, another four years, which is fantastic. I just really wanted to ask you a little bit about the fact that uh, this, this plenipotentiary conference uh, has seen calls to modernise ITU, and uh, over the next four years, perhaps you could tell us where could ITU make the biggest strides? Yes, well, uh, you recall that the last plenipotentiary conference adopted a number of efficiency measures, 30, in fact, um, so we've implemented um, most of those, um, I'm pleased to say, and uh, made quite a lot of uh, gains through doing that. However, I, I still believe that uh, we can go further on some of those, in particular with regard to the duplication, uh, duplication of activities and functions in the ITU, and also uh, do more to centralise some of the uh, administrative and finance uh, services in the ITU so that uh, we, we have a more specialised workforce on, on these areas rather than having it spread across uh, the, the different bureaus as well as the General Secretariat. So that's one area. Um, we've also done a lot of work on um, simplifying and digitising our internal processes. And a lot of these processes were paper-based. Um, we can do. We, we still have a lot more to do in that area, um, but we've also reduced uh, the use and dependency on paper quite significantly. I'm pleased to say, since uh, since I started, uh, we're now using three million less pages a year than than we were doing. And it's noticeable noticeable at this conference too. Exactly. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, another area that we can do more of, especially you know in in the headquarters. Um, and then uh, also we um, we are looking at uh, trialing uh, some uh, machine translation and machine captioning uh, tools. Uh, these technologies are, are developing rapidly. Um, so I think in the next few years they're going to be sufficiently, uh, 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 the quality will be sufficient to be able to use them and implement them and thereby increase the amount of translation we do for the same budget. Um, we're also uh, trialling, uh, outsourcing the translation of the web pages, you know, that's a trial that's ongoing at the moment uh, with a number of member states and that's, that's also uh, proving to be quite beneficial. And the captioning will make ITU much more accessible as well. Exactly, yes. We do uh, provide captioning at the moment, but it's um, manual captioning. Uh, um, we've, done a, we've already done a, a, a trial comparing manual captioning with machine captioning, and it's rapidly catching up with the, ma with the quality and accuracy of the, of the manual captioning. Um, so, so there's that area, and uh, another area that uh, I'm particularly keen on, on uh, taking further is the, the remote participation to our meetings, uh, because this will reduce um, the cost, of course, of participating, cost of travelling, and the cost of accommodation for participating in meetings, most of them being in Geneva. Uh, but also for those countries that are far from Geneva and with limited resources and, and not able to come you know, to the meetings, it means they'll be able to participate at, at no cost. So it, it will increase the inclusiveness, you know, the opportunity for all our members to participate in, in our work. So that's, that's uh, also uh, something I'm very keen on. But the one thing that will m give us a, a huge move forward on modernizing the ITU, I believe, is the new building. Now, the new building, of course, is going to be uh, a smart building, environmentally sustainable. It's the design that's been chosen, uh, provides a tremendous amount of light, the way it's been designed, uh, and also uh, capacity, so this spacious accommodation. Um, It'll be an environment, I believe, that will inspire uh, staff and delegates uh, for future generations. Um, so that's an opportunity for us to introduce modern working methods, um, flexible working. 
So not only will that improve uh, efficiency, but it'll also enhance uh, staff uh, life work balance. And it's proved to be very effective. Uh, and many studies have shown that to be the case. So I think that's, um, that's something that's really uh, looking forward to taking that project forward. Uh, and um, as you know, we've been very fortunate to get uh, generous sponsorship from Saudi Arabia, UAE and Czech Republic have made a donation. Um, uh, so with their support, you know, we, we will be able to enhance this building and make it something that we're all very proud of. Um, and I would encourage, of course, other member states and sector members to follow their example and, and make a contribution to this, to this new building. And that's a brand new building that will be replacing a, a building uh, in Geneva that's been there for, for how many years now? Well, since the late 50s, yes. Uh, that building no, no longer meets uh, a number of requirements, safety requirements, accessibility requirements. So yes, that building will be demolished and the new building will be built on that site. So it's a complex uh, project because we have to relocate there's 300 staff in that building will need to be relocated. Um, but the main thing is, uh, the main challenge, I think, is this change of culture of the organisation, moving into an open space environment, paperless working, modern uh, working methods, flexible working. Uh, so it'd be quite a change uh, for ITU, but I think definitely a change for the better. Absolutely. And talking about change, you brought uh, gender parity to the Standardisation Bureau when you were director of it. I wanted to ask you, what would it take to get gender parity across the whole of the organisation? Yes, well, <clears throat> as we know, um, less than half the world's population is currently connected. And statistics show that over 250 million more women are offline than men. Um, so a lot of women uh, and girls, they're missing out on that uh, opportunity of empowerment, um, social and health benefits, educational benefits, um, and, uh, and the opportunities that, that will come from future jobs. I mean, mo most uh, of the jobs uh, that will be available for today's generation of girls don't exist at the moment. Um, but one thing we can be sure of is that whatever career uh, they go into, they're going to need digital skills. So it's very important, all the work that we're doing to, uh, to encourage more uh, women and girls to come into the sector and acquire digital skills. Um, and uh, yes, in the TSB, when I was there, uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, we increased uh, the percentage of uh, women professionals from uh, less than 20% to, to over 40% while I was there. And I always like to say that that's not because I chose women candidates because they were women. I chose them because I thought they were the best candidate on merit. And I, I'm pleased to say they proved me right, you know. Um, but we did introduce uh, a number of other measures that helped. I mean, we, we introduced um, uh, leadership courses for the women professionals. We introduced uh, unconscious bias courses, especially for those that are going on to the uh, interview panels. And, uh, and I myself completed the UN Women uh, online course, I Know Gender. And uh, I encouraged all the staff to, to, to take that course. Um, so I think you know, uh, leading uh, by example is very important in this area. Uh, and uh, if, um, if the women can see that you know, they have the support uh, needed to progress their careers in the ITU, then that makes a huge difference. So this is what we're, we're looking to extend to the whole of the organization. And um, we can see that we're making progress. I mean, perfect example here is Doreen being elected as the new BDT director. Um, Doreen started as a junior professional in the ITU, so is a perfect uh, role model. And role models are very important, of course. Uh, but also, um, we've seen in this conference uh, that a number of women 
taking leadership positions. I mean, we have more women uh, chairing the committees than, than men. So we're definitely making progress and, and we have the ITU uh, gender policy, very sound policy. So implementing that, I'm sure we'll continue down the road of uh, reaching gender uh, parity. Finally, after your re-election, what message would you like to convey to both the people here and, and to the wider audience as well? Yes, well, uh, as we know, um, ICTs are going to be essential for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and ITU as a lead UN agency on ICTs has clearly got a very important role to play there. But there are uh, many organisations all involved in implementing the SDGs and using ICTs to help implement the SDGs. So uh, I always say that uh, collaboration, coordination and, and cooperation uh, are the key to ensure that we all bring our own specific competencies to the table, that uh, we don't overlap uh, and duplicate our efforts and, and uh, pool our resources uh, to the common good so that um, we do achieve the implementation of the SDGs and, and bring this wonderful technology to everyone everywhere. Well, congratulations once again for being re-elected as a Deputy Secretary General. We look forward to catching up with you again over the next four years. And uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio today. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Cheers. Cheers.